Ever since I was a kid tucked up on the sofa watching the adventures of the Doctor, I've dreamed of having my own sonic screwdriver. Not just a replica, but one that felt real with a bit of heft and history to it. You know, something that looked less plasticky, more authentic. I've actually been looking for years, but every time I thought I'd found something, my heart sank, because the one I found, well, they were either too toy-like or they were too expensive, and they were always just that little bit out of reach. Even the sonic screwdriver won't get me out of this one. I'd even got a, a sonic screwdriver that doubled as a Wii controller, and it was fun, of course it was, but it didn't really scratch the itch that I had. I've watched the new Doctors come and go, each with their own version of the Sonic, but none of them really caught my fancy until now. When I first saw the 14th Doctor's Sonic screwdriver, it was like the stars had aligned. This wasn't just another toy, it felt like the real deal, like a genuine prop from the show. It was as if all of those years of searching had led me to this moment. So here we are, about to dive into a review that's actually been decades in the making. Join me as I explore whether the 14th Doctor's sonic screwdriver lives up to the dreams of a lifelong Whovian. Is it the piece of Gallifrey I've been searching for? Let's find out beyond the sofa. Have you ever wanted to wield a sonic screwdriver to unlock doors, decode alien tech, or just show off a piece of Gallifreyan engineering? It's a key to countless adventures, but for us, the fans, it's a symbol of our love for the show. The real question is, can a replica truly capture the essence of this iconic device? Can it transport us, even for just a moment, from our living room to the TARDIS? Now, I know I'm a little bit late to the party with this video, but the end of last year was so busy and I didn't actually have time to open it. Yes, I have left this sealed in its packet since I got it, just so I could make this video. Getting this item was a little bit like finding a rare collectible. The speed at which these things went out of stock is remarkable. I think they opened the doors at 10am on the 20th of November. They were gone by one o'clock the same day. And I honestly, I didn't think that I was going to be able to get one. And I almost gave up several times, especially when I was booted out of the Cloudflare waiting line and just put back right at the beginning. Or when I finally got to the website and it was down. And I've heard that this was an issue with uh, previous popular character options items as well. And it needs to be something that's worked on because that experience for fans was pretty appalling. There were people waiting for 70 minutes only to get to the site and be booted back into the, into the queue. People who had an item in the basket were told a rate limit had been reached and that they couldn't check out anymore. There were issues with PayPal not accepting uh, perfectly valid cards. There were no confirmation emails arriving after purchase. And I used to be a web designer, so I know a little bit about creating shopping carts. This shouldn't be happening, and it really is something that character options need to invest money in, especially if they're going to do these big launches. I know other companies like Games Workshop often have problems as well, but clients should not be seeing errors and debugging information. And if rate limiting is an issue, then you need a better optimized queuing system. Nobody should get through a queue only to have the website that they were trying to get to fall over. That's why you've got the queue in the first place. And all of this left me feeling really unsatisfied as a customer. And I, right now, I feel I'd be wary of buying anything from character options again under those circumstances. And had this been something that I hadn't really been looking for for some time, I probably wouldn't have uh, given it a second thought, given up early, and just left the process. But I did eventually get through, and in terms of delivery and packaging, everything was fine, and it arrived in good time. On to the actual Sonic itself. I should say, to be completely fair to character options, I did finally manage to place my order at 11.50, and it, I did finally get an email telling me that I'd paid, and that was just after 1 o'clock. And then the shipment email was a few days later, and after the actual sale, after that day, everything seemed to go to plan. But it would have been nice to get a, a more instant confirmation that I'd actually bought something. 
Okay, so let's talk about the design. This sonic screwdriver isn't playing around. It boasts an electro-plated finish, giving it an aura of authenticity and sophistication. The feel, the weight, the texture, every aspect suggests that this is a premium build. Perhaps not as aesthetically pleasing in, in weight or authentic um, as some of the other prop manufacturers, but this is a toy that doesn't really feel quite like a toy. Now, I know that there are some people out there who said that they prefer the standard edition of this toy, and I can kind of see where they're coming from. If your whole collection is the plastic finished lineup from previous series, there's a good chance that this limited edition won't quite fit in amongst the rest. The great thing is, the option is there for fans like me, who'd like something which is a little bit more screen accurate, and for those who just want an aesthetically pleasing collection, well, you've got the uh, others as well. And the first thing you'll notice about this Sonic is the craftsmanship. It's actually very well put together for something that's basically a bit of plastic. It has a very nice weight to it, and the features of it have been crafted to closely resemble what we actually see on screen. It's got two distinct settings that transform it from a static piece of plastic to an, an interactive gadget. First, there's the switch that allows you to open up the device. Now, on previous screwdrivers, this would have been done with a flick of the wrist, but this edition has a push-up mechanism that also doubles as the activation button. For cosplayers, this could give you several options for how to play your character. For the rest of us, it's just more things to play with, and that's always good fun, isn't it? With each activation, the screwdriver comes to life. And like previous versions, the number of times the button is pressed will determine which sound the device makes and what pattern of lights are going to accompany it. The sounds are different, but unlike previous versions, these are actually pretty similar. And they also seem to be a little bit quiet. Uh, but they are the whirs and buzzes that have echoed in my ears since the 60th anniversary episodes. The lights on the, the device are pretty nice too, with different pulsing patterns depending on the number of taps of the activation button. Limited edition owners actually have a few more tricks up their sleeve as well, because opening up the battery compartment reveals a special button that actually changes the colour of the lights on the device. You can have the original blue, green, yellow or red. And one thing I noticed was that choosing one of the other colours also seemed to make the sounds a little bit louder as well, but I'm not sure if this is a bug or a feature. Finally, the device has a metallic section on the base of the handle. It's actually still made of plastic, but it looks a lot like metal unless you get really close to it. And this can be turned to, as the box says, role play adjust the settings. And I actually quite like this feature. It's not something that I'll ever use, but it does feel like the whole toy has been thought through well, and the designers have given some thought to how well it's going to be used, either by cosplayers or by excited kids. So on the whole, I'm very happy with my purchase. It comes in a nice white box, which we'll, I'll now have to obsessively keep in case I ever want to sell it. I'm never going to sell it. It's got the 60th Diamond logo on, which was criminally underused throughout the 60th anniversary itself, and it gives you basic instructions on how to use the device. Let's talk about the resale market for a moment. At the time of the sale, I believe these were available for around the £150 mark on eBay. My hope is that nobody bought them from there. Certainly, there are still some around, and checking eBay seems to be available for around about £40 to £60. There are more expensive ones, but right now you don't have to pay that much. With that, there is also the possibility of counterfeit products, especially on platforms like eBay, who I know do their best, but some are going to slip through, let's face it. Do be careful if you're trying to buy one of these now. However, overall, this is a great little item. Personally, I think it looks better than the older Sonic screwdriver releases. It's just a personal thing. I, they didn't really grab me, you know. And it feels good to hold, and it's going to look good on a shelf. And that's where we get back to a small child sitting in front of their favourite show. Is this something that would have impressed him? Well, you know what? I actually think it is. I often think that as a fan, we intellectualise purchases and give ourselves reasons why this is an important thing that we must have. And often none of those things are real. And actually, all we've had is this emotional reaction to the object. And that's okay. And that's why this makes me very happy, because it's connecting me to something that I love. That's what I think anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That's it for this video. I hope you can join me on the next one when we go beyond the sofa.